Gorecki, as the worship associate this morning. Our Zoom and audiovisual texts today are Don West Jr., Paul Bogdan, and Pam Floodman. And our music will be led by our talented music director, Carol Cole. This morning, we are delighted to welcome to UUFLB Reverend James Ford for a service that is focused on the story of Hanukkah and what we as a liberal religious community can learn from it. Reverend James Ford is an American Zen Buddhist and priest and a Unitarian Universalist minister. Reverend Ford earned a BA in psychology from Sonoma State University, and as well as a Master of Divinity and an MA in the philosophy of religion, both from the Pacific School of Religion. Reverend Ford is a member of the American Zen Teachers Association and served on its membership committee for a decade. He is also a member of the Soto Zen Buddhist Association in which he served on the board of directors. You can find his most his latest interview on his blog, Monkey Mind, Easily Distracted. Reverend James is also the guiding teacher for the Empty Moon Zen Sangha. His most recent book is an introduction to Zen Cones learning the language of dragons. Reverend Ford, when I asked him to explain his sermon for the, this morning, he gave the following answer, which was also used for the services blurb on the website, email, and other ways we inform who would like to see the sermon as follows. The story of Hanukkah has become the story of miracles, of a light that persists. James finds himself wondering about light and with that what is the light of a spiritual community like ours? What is the vision that guides a liberal religious community? Each Sunday, anywhere there is a service held in a Unitarian Universalist congregation, a chalice is lit. The flaming chalice is the symbol of our faith. If you have joined us this morning by Zoom, I invite you to light a chalice within your home as Reverend Ford lights the chalice for us here at UUFLB. Our chalice lighting words this morning are from Laura Thompson. She serves as the lead minister at Minnesota Valley UU Fellowship. Across the distance, the light from within me shines, sending love to all. Across the distance, your light is fuel that warms me and helps to keep my own light burning. Together, we keep the flame of community burning bright. Thank you, Reverend Ford, for lighting our chalice this morning to begin our time of worship. Throughout the service this morning, if you are here with us in the building, I invite you, if you wish, to come forward and light a candle here in this sanctuary. In recognition of whatever you are carrying in your heart as you join us for worship today. At UUFLB, we are a welcoming congregation. Whoever you are, whomever you are, no matter your age or gender, your ancestral or ethnic background, and whatever sincere questions that bring you bring with you today. Whatever has brought you here this morning, we welcome you to our community of mutual caring and serious intent to grow as spiritual and ethical beings. Many thanks to everyone at UUFLB who works together each week to create opportunities for us to worship together and to be together in community. Our board, our worship committee, and everyone who helps to prepare each week for our Sunday morning worship services and other events such as the Zoom at noon discussion group. We also know that there are always more opportunities to work together and more to be done. So if you are looking for a way to become more involved, please reach out. For those of you who are new to our community, please connect with us after service. If you would like to be added to our email list, email mailing list, so that you can receive advance notice of each service and other events. Connecting with each other is the way in which 
we build community as a strong base from which we can go out and make a difference in the world. On the slide that Dawn will put up for us is the information about upcoming services here at UUFLB. On December 24th, um, not at UUFLB, but at Tapestry UU, there is a Christmas Eve service that starts at 5.30 p.m. Um, they're asking for masks and um, recognition that you have vac been vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, and on December 25th here in the sanctuary will be open, um, no service, but um, as my mother puts it, bring a story or a song or just to be together with people on Christmas Day. Um, our board would like to appoint a safety task force to review the situation here at UUFLB and to make recommendations to the board as to any steps which we what should take to protect the safety of congregants and guests. This could involve looking at steps we might take concerning protection against the spread of COVID, flu, or other infectious diseases, training of the congregation in the use of CPR, or other emergency health equipment, coordination with the Laguna Beach Fire and Police Departments, and other areas that the task force may deem appropriate. It is anticipated that this task force would serve for only a relatively short period, perhaps two or three months. It would not require a long-term commitment. It might or might not lead to the recommendation of a longer-term safety committee. If you would, let, would be interested in serving on the short-term safety task force, please let me or Oakley Frost know. I can give you his contact information following the service if you do not already have it. The gathering music was Walking in the Air, sung by Chanticleer. The song's lyrics talk about walking on air and floating in a moonlit sky, and of miracle, much like the story of Hanukkah, but also how no one would believe if anyone was to tell their relations that they have seen people fly. I think this matches with our fourth principle a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We ask for someone to not discourage another from searching for the truth or of if a person or being can fly and what that could mean to them. This is much like looking for the truth and meaning of how the Hanukkah story could help us understand our religious community, like how Reverend Ford will do in his sermon later on. Our centering thought this morning is from the Gray Hymnal reading 542, written by Diane Lee Momney, titled Solstice. I, I invite if you wish to read these words together with me and to unmute yourselves if you have joined us this morning on Zoom. Again, did the earth shift? Again, again, did the night grow short? short. And the day of the day, and the people of the earth celebrated, celebrated in their own ways. Our opening hymn this morning is number 146 in the Great Hymnal. Soon the day will arrive. For those of you who are joining by Zoom, and they will also be on the screen. They will be on the screen. Please stand if you wish and join with our amazing and talented director, Carol Cole, in singing 146, Soon the Day Will Come. Soon the day will arrive when all will be together and no longer will we live in fear and the children will smile and with wandering weather on that day thunder clouds will appear wait and see Wait and see what a world there can be if we share, if we care, you and me. 
Let us take a moment to remind ourselves why we come together as a community. I invite you to read these words together when and if it feels right for you. If you wish, please unmute your microphone so that we can feel the power when we join our voices together. The words of the United Unison Affirmation will be on your screens. Please join me in reading. Love. Love is the spirit of this fellowship, and this service is its ours. This is our great privilege. While together in peace, we can seek the truth and love to help one another. We have come to a time in our service to briefly share the important events that have touched our lives in the past week. Our joys, when shared, are magnified, and in sharing our sorrows, we provide the support and care that are vital for all of us in community. During this time of sharing our joys and concerns, we have paused the recording of this blessing is to receive. In this self-governing and self-sustaining community, we recognize that it is a responsibility to do both well. As we approach the time for our offering, we invite you to give what you will. For the work of this fellowship, that means so much to each of us, that has meant so much to those who have came before us, and that will mean so much to those who may join us in the future, and to the work that we can do together. There is a slide up on the screen um, that have has explanations to how you can donate if you are not in the building. Um, you can donate through um, cash, sorry, checks only through the postal service and then also through Tithely or PayPal. Um, our fellowship we are generous. Our fellowship depends on the love and generous contributions from our members. We are empowered by the innumerable gifts of those who join in covenant with us, time, compassion, humor, and financial contribution. And all of our gifts generously given are needed for this fellowship and for its continued good work in the world. During this time of offering, we will be passing around a basket within the fellowship. The information on your screen provides two additional ways in which you can give either electronically on the left or by sending a check to the fellowship. Also, I don't think this one has the um, QR codes, but um, we could, yeah. Um, pl please, thank you. Please, yeah. <laughs> Rita? You can. <laughs> All together, bell people. <laughs> oh. 
walking in Wonderland. <laughs> Thank you, bell ringers. <laughs> Please join us now in singing for each other to each other words of sincere gratitude from you I receive to you I give together we share and from this we live. From you I receive to you I give together we share and from this we live. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. So now we move into the second part of what we do. Initially, it's the gathering of the community. It's us coming together and, and, and uh, exulting in each other's presence, uh, reminding ourselves of the practical parts of, of what it means to be uh, here together, uh, supporting ourselves, volunteering for things, being involved uh, in the mysteries of relationship. Now a turn. The uh, a first part of that is an invitation into the mysteries of presence, of, of silence, of the possibilities we find when we simply allow ourselves to notice. Perhaps to help us uh, slide into that place, a few words from the great A. Powell Davies, the Unitarian minister of the middle of the last century. Uh, a powerful teacher for many of us. When two individuals meet, so do two private worlds. None of our private worlds is big enough for us to live a wholesome life in. We need the wider world of joy and wonder, of purpose and venture, of toil and tears. What are we, any of us, but strangers and sojourners forlornly wandering through the nighttime until we draw together and find our, the meaning of our lives in one another. Dissolving our fears in each other's courage, making music together and lighting torches to guide us through the night. We belong together. Love is what we need to love and be loved. Silence of the heart, presence to meditation, to contemplation, to prayer.
according to the traditional Jewish lunar calendar, this evening at sunset is the beginning of the eight days of Hanukkah. As is mentioned in popular news stories every year at this time, Hanukkah is in fact a minor holiday in that traditional calendar, or was originally. It's become a way for the Jewish community to celebrate a season dominated by our culture's Christian hegemony. And so today, the holiday has become pretty important. Of course, that's not the end of the matter. Uh, ironies of several sorts begin to pile on each other. The story is, among other things, about a war between assimilationists and traditionalists that is between religious liberals and conservatives. It's not even put too fine a point on it to say a war between liberals and fundamentalists, where the fundamentalists went. The early rabbis were wary of the Maccabees and their holiday for several reasons. For one, they, the rabbis, arose out of the ruin of that Jewish community's revolt against Rome. And they were very aware of how the Maccabean called to arms against their Greek overlords, which is the basis of the Hanukkah story, was a Pyrrhic victory. There are also deeper ironies in that much of the shape of the holiday, probably like Christmas, has ancient pagan roots. So what do we do with this messy holiday? Well, the rabbis took a small miracle collected in the story of the war, focused almost exclusively on it, unraveled its many threads, and reflected on it all. But most of all, on that light, which should have gone out, but didn't. They saw the story offered something terribly important. The question was, what is that light. With that, Hanukkah is all about our deeper calling toward the true freedom in the midst of many distractions and seductions. It casts a light on that which is most important. With that, Hanukkah offers a universal message, one for all of us. Hanukkah tells us about what that light, which does not go out, might mean for individuals and for communities. It is a celebration of highest possibility, of wisdom, of perspective, of vision. And this all makes me think of you, the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Laguna Beach. You are in the midst of transition, I understand, and I would like to hold up for you an idea. It might be a good time to consider your vision. What light that guides you that should go out by all reasonable construction, but doesn't. The truth is every community has a vision, whether it's written down or simply the inarticulate yearning of gathered hearts. In a UU congregation, the vision statement can be and often is the baseline understanding of the community about itself. Not that articulating a vision is easy, especially in our liberal congregations with our visceral resistance to authority of various sorts, something which uh, manifests in our collective history as UUs as a resistance to creeds. No enforced, I believe, statements. With that, with that resistance in our bones, there's always pushback when people try to articulate something like a vision statement, even if it's simply meant to be a clarification of where a community is in a given time and place. Still, I think it's important to do this, especially for a group like a gathering of religious liberals. I think of understanding and articulating our vision, that light which does not go out, the light that inspires and guides us as a spiritual discipline. If we don't have a binding creed, then who are we? What are we about? 
unspoken visions are hard to deal with. They can easily turn in unhealthy directions. I think we're probably all aware of what hidden motivations can do. So how do we pursue clarity, vision, that light? How do we avoid it become a laundry list of various things people want or wish were true about their community? A common trap with vision statements, something that looks like a vision but isn't. Lists of what to do become later, a next step. I'll talk about that in a moment. But how, do, how to do the first thing first? How do we articulate our particular understanding of that light which guides us? I find myself thinking of the 19th century Hindu sage Ramana Maharshi, an enormously important figure in the meeting of religions in modernity, and especially this emerging sense of spirituality between what some call trans-religious or interspiritual. Big words for that quest for the true, the sacred beyond the confines of a single religion. Ramana Maharshi's core practice was a question, who am I? Who am I? Sometimes, and I believe here, it can also be phrased, who are we? You know, after the two easy responses about a clump of people who come to a place literally, as in your situation, as the Laguna Beach UU congregation, or figuratively, as in some emerging communities that gather on Zoom or similar platforms. Who are we? Really, in our bones, what is emerging? Who are we? Not a bad thing to consider, don't you think, for you all? in this time of change. At its very best, a vision statement is the foundation, what I've seen called a group's vow with the universe. I rather like that. The vision is the ground, as I said, a foundation. In some processes, the vision is the community's hope for a next period of time, say a decade. I suggest the articulated vision is better understood as one's best take on the heart of the matter in the context of this moment and this place, and let the next time take care of itself. Focus on now. It should touch larger verities, but they also and maybe mostly need to be specific. It's not necessary to assume it is who we will be for all time. But again, in my view, the clearer that sense of communal aspiration is, the better. A mission statement often follows, uh, along with a covenant. Those are the other things that usually come with a formal vision statement. The mission statement tries to spell out how the vision is put into action. The covenant is an agreement as to how everyone will relate to each other in the light of that vision. This formula certainly isn't the only way one can come to clarification of one's vision. It's just how we mostly do it today. When I served the first Unitarian Church in Providence, the covenant combined vision with promises of how to be together. And in Providence, revisiting the covenant, spelt with a capital C, wasn't a regular thing that every decade or so revisit. While I was there, we came to only the third covenant in the church's 300-year history. The process at Providence turned out to be one of the most powerful of my experiences within community. I also noticed a couple of moments along the way where things could have gone deeply wrong. Special agendas, wanting the formal vision to be that of a smaller group within the community, or even a single strong personality, rather than an attempt at capturing the actual vision of the community can be a formula for disaster. Like any authentic spiritual enterprise, there are lots of opportunities to go off the rails. In case you missed it, the principles and purposes are our denomination's vision statement. For the Unitarian Universalist Association, the denomination's vision is spelled out in the bylaws of the association as Article 2. Our statement of principles and purposes is the association's vision. You know, 
the statement that begins with an assertion about the worth of every individual and concludes with an appeal to notice our radical interdependence. It is supposed to be visited every decade or so. That's actually in the language of our bylaws. Although in fact, it has only been revisited formally twice. Uh, while many people detest it, the majority among us have found it very useful in, a, in an additional source acknowledging ancient earth-centered roots was added to the principles and purposes in 1995. In 2009, a rather, in my view, mild revisioning in a somewhat more clearly spiritual direction, it called to change the seventh principle to speak of reverence for the interdependent web instead of respect failed to advance to a required second vote by a 573 to 586 vote of the delegates present at the General Assembly. There's been some tweaking since. Today, there's a fair amount of energy around a proposed eighth principle, embracing a conscious commitment to the work of anti-racism. As it, it began as a grassroots movement in 2013. And now, just to keep it all rich, there is a commission that has been charged with a top to bottom revisit of Article 2. In fact, there's a new draft being floated, which you can find at the UUA website, that which will be voted and which will be voted on this year, if it passes, will set the stage to completely replace the principles. As I said, you can find it at the UUA website. The draft runs three pages, although you can bet the actual document that will be presented at this coming GA is likely to look somewhat different. There will be a vote at this year's General Assembly, and then if it passes, there will be a second vote in 2024. This year's vote is a simple majority. The second vote requires three quarters of those present to affirm the change. I find it unlikely it will pass. And that's okay. Making changes in the statement is hard and it's meant to be hard. Although I really, really like it and would like to see it pass. The top line, the heart of the matter of which all the rest is unpacking is a single sentence. Love is the enduring force that holds us together. Love, a very interesting vision. If ever there were a binding vision of our association, I'd say that is it, although already I'm seeing serious pushback. Did I mention that I find it unlikely to pass? Some of the pushback is from people who say it's a creed, others think it's too spiritual, and others say it's too vague. Love is a complicated word. It invites interpretation, it calls to several parts of the human heart, sometimes contradictory. For our purposes here, I'd like to use this question of love as a vision statement to sort of workshop what one might encounter with a serious vision statement for the church here. Something that actually tries to reflect the common heart of a group of, say, this group. I have a colleague who I knew from before either of us went to seminary. We first met at a Sufi study group in the early 1980s, before our paths diverged. Although, as it turned out, independently, we followed very similar trajectories. Eventually, he found the spiritual grounding he needed within insight meditation, a subset of Buddhism. And for me, that was and remains a revision, Zen, another subset of Buddhism. We both, in both our cases, we saw the limits of the Buddhist sanghas that work so well for us as places of practice. In both cases, the practice was limited to meditation, classes, and spiritual direction. We didn't see the living communities we each thought critical to the flowering of whole lives. In response to our own inner compasses, we each separately found our way into Unitarian Universalism. At the end of seminary, he went before the Ministerial Fellowship Committee. It's a harrowing experience. You might listen to this, Don. Uh, uh, um, um, where after years of study, many thousands of dollars invested, an advanced degree obtained, a 
boatload of internships and specialized training. It all comes down to an hour with an overworked, overextended committee of volunteers, clergy and lay. They make the last call. One begins the hour with a brief homily, 10 minutes max. Many a candidate has had a harsh introduction to the rest of the hour when their homily is stopped mid-sentence and must begin the rest of that time without recovering from the lurch. In my time, the committee traveled between Boston, Chicago, and Berkeley, where they set up a rented space and met candidates an hour at a time, hour after hour for a couple of days. All volunteers, I think I said, greater love, I suggest, but maybe for a different sermon. So there he was. My friend began with a little homily on love a solid piece of work telegraphing his future success in parish ministry. However, when the homily ended, in the right time, I can add, with an extinguishing of the chalice and a brief benediction, one of the committee sighed and said, so, what do you say after you've run out of sermons on love? My friend had the uncomfortable feeling his was not the first such homily they had heard that day. The end of that story, well, as I said, he's gone on to be a highly respected minister, but I believe he's also been haunted by that question after he told me about it. It seeped into my heart, and I've considered it from a thousand angles over the years. Love, so complicated, so messy, so easy to simply be maudlin, so hard to lean into the harsh and dreadful of love. And yet, and yet, here's a vision, love, a vision, a vision statement that challenges, that might on occasion offend, that seeps into the back of your mind, that keeps it all a process. Again, for workshopping purposes, we have that draft UUA article too. After that most radical of all assertions, love is the enduring force that holds us together, we get some unpacking. Words are floated, pluralism, interdependence, evolution, justice, generosity. It's actually presented as a graphic with each of these words circling around love. That presenting, presentation as a graphic is another reason some people give for not liking the draft. I mean, I don't care how it is ultimately packaged. Bullet points would be just fine, although I like the intention of the graphic. But keeping to the actual intent, these words are unpacked with practical on the ground applications. Under justice, for instance, we find the draft language of the proposed eighth principle appears. We covenant to dismantle racism and all forms of oppression within with individuals and our institutions. We are accountable to each other for this work. At our congregational level, you might notice it sort of telegraphs what we might find in a mission statement. Of course, these things always bleed into each other one way or another. So maybe our denomination will decide to assert it is a spiritual gathering with social and political consequences. I find that almost too wonderful to hope for. And so just a little more as you all consider those questions. Me, I find understanding love as an experience, my experience of radical interdependence is critical for me as I aspire to be of some use in this world. I suggest you may find this calling to your hearts as well. In any case, I find the draft article too, a dramatic example of what might lie ahead here. I hope you all do follow through on this project of clarification. I know it was dear uh, to many hearts. COVID uh, um, interfered with a lot of processes here and uh, maybe there's a new time for reflection and for naming names. I think um, it could be for the best. Uh, this little band persists. I think 
you're in a good enough position to profitably engage such a process, a right time and place. So what is the vision of this congregation, this fellowship? You all gathered here in Laguna Beach. When you ask yourselves, what is it about this community that gathers us? What is that? When you look at each other, what do you see? Can you name it? To name it is to name your North Star. It is the light that should have gone out, but didn't. It is the light that persists. And it can guide you through the dark night. Nothing less. And that important. Amen, friends. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 118, This Little Light of Mine. The words will be on the screens. Please rise as you are comfortable and join Carol in singing number 118, This Little Light of Mine. Good on. This little light of mine, I'm gonna shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. shine everywhere i go i'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine building up a world i'm gonna let it shine building up the world i'm gonna let it shine building up a world I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. One more time, and this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, and this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now is the time to, for us to extinguish the chalice at UUFLB and within our homes. We extinguish this flame, but we keep its light in our hearts. With its message of community, love, and justice, taking it out into the world in which we live until we are together again. Our hour concludes. We begin the slow process of scattering back into our lives. Hopefully this brief moment together reminds us that we are not ultimately alone. There are possibilities when we turn our gaze and our care and our attention to each other. This little fellowship is so important. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you for shining your light. Thank you for allowing us to find our light. And with that, let us depart in peace and maybe with just a hint of unrest. Amen. Please join me in singing Let There Be Peace on Earth. Stand as you might be comfortable.
Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my moment, live each moment in peace, eternally, let there be peace on earth, let it begin with me, happy holidays.